Big Brother, mainstream media, government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Welcome, everybody. It is Friday, January 20th, 2012. I'm Mike Adams filling in for Alex Jones, who is off today. Thank you for joining us. We have a huge lineup of incredible news for you today and several guests, including a couple of guests in studio, including Dr. Edward Group, who's here to talk to us about the detoxification of aluminum. So if you are concerned about chemtrails or the aluminum in foods and medicines and vaccines, and you want to learn how to stay clean and clear of aluminum, stay tuned. We're going to have him joining us. Also, Dr. Peter DeVette, author of Heal Thyself, talked, talking to us about quantum medicine. We've got another guest as well coming up, a surprise guest. And then, of course, Bob Chapman in the third hour. And in terms of the news that we have today, hold on to your hat, folks. We have news about the carpet bombing of Texas with rabies vaccines that are being airdropped from planes to carpet bomb over 7,000 square miles of rural South and West Texas. Yep, they're dropping rabies vaccines as if they were weapons of war. <laughs> That's coming up. Oh, man, I don't know why I'm laughing. It's kind of sad, but it's so crazy sometimes what's out there with the vaccines. We've also got stories about, a, a sadly, another child has died after being given nine vaccines all at the same time. An infant that didn't even have the honor of experiencing much life at all. Sadly, we will go into that issue. We've got a bunch of news on vaccines. We've got news about the SOPA situation and Anonymous having a massive counterattack against the federal government. They took down the Justice Department website. They took down the FBI. They took down the RIAA and the MPAA in their backlash against mega upload being raided by the feds. That was sort of the feds way of giving their finger to the SOPA protest that took place two days ago, Wednesday. Massive protests, massive blackouts all across the internet. The feds didn't like that, so they immediately moved to exercise their tyrannical power to try to take down a website that they claim is violating copyrights. We'll get into that today. We've got news about Google. We've got news about gold. We've got news about Ron Paul. All of that coming up right here on the Alex Jones Show. Actually, it's four guests today, including Bob Chapman. So now in terms of the surprise guests, I might as well just leak the surprise right now for you. Her name is Tisha Casita. She is running for Congress in Colorado. And in fact, she has a position very publicly speaking out against NDAA. And she's in favor of food freedom. She's in favor of basic fundamental human freedoms and rights for all of us. She's going to be joining us and we'll hear from her for the first time. That's the, her first time to join the Alex Jones show. All that and more coming up. Now, I got to say, uh, thank you for having me here. It's an honor to be here today. And uh, some of this news just drives me crazy about the vaccines now, on the other side of the break, we're going to get into that. But let me give you a, a preview of the carpet bombing story. Here we go. The, the Texas Department of Agriculture has dropped 1.8 million edible vaccines. This happened just two weeks ago to try to vaccinate the coyotes and the wolves who are running rampant, they say, across Texas with rabies. But as they're doing this, they don't realize that they're actually dropping genetic material for rabies right into the environment. Now, do you think that might have a problem? Do you think that might recombine with some of the other viruses that are out there in the wild? Maybe create a, a worse version of rabies that then needs more vaccinations. And what's, what's this deal about now vaccinating all the animals in the world? I mean, isn't it bad enough and profitable enough that they're vaccinating children and adults and senior citizens? Now they got to start targeting all the animals out there? Really? <laughs> There's a lot of animals to vaccinate. That's a lot of money for the vaccine makers. No wonder. Now they're going to start targeting, I'm sure, skunks, possums, and raccoons, and wild pigs. So all that coming up and much more right here on The Alex Jones Show. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this break with all of that breaking news and our guests. Stay with us. 
Welcome to the broadcast, everybody. It is Friday, January 20th, 2012. This is Mike Adams filling in for Alex Jones, who is off today, no doubt working very hard on other projects. In fact, he's going to be bringing us a video that he's recording right now. That's going to be at the top of the third hour, about a six or seven minute video report from Alex Jones on some of the breaking developments that are happening today. It's great to join you. Thanks. I want to thank Alex for having me on and thank you for your support of me being a fill in host. We've got a ton of news to cover today. First, big breaking news on Fast and Furious. Now, Patrick J. Cunningham has informed the House Oversight Committee, this is out of Arizona, he informed them that he's going to invoke his Fifth Amendment protection so that he doesn't need to testify on what really happened in Arizona. Now, Fast and Furious, of course, I'm talking about. The covert scheme to ship guns into Mexico, th thousands of guns, and then blame the Second Amendment as gun violence erupted back in the United States. Now, they got caught. Eric Holder has been caught. The Obama administration caught. And now they're invoking their Fifth Amendment rights, which is especially ironic, given that they don't want you to have your Second Amendment rights. So they want to just selectively invoke the rights for themselves but strip those rights away from you and all of your fellow family members, neighborhood, friends, all the people in your community can't have those rights. So think about this. Thousands of guns shipped into Mexico, violent outbreaks. Now, the murder of law enforcement officers in the United States has already been linked to those very guns that the U.S. government shipped into Mexico. And still, the mainstream media won't tell the truth about this. They say, oh, this was a... This was a gun sting gone bad. No, it wasn't. It was a crime. It was a, a criminal scheme dreamed up by the White House to destroy the Second Amendment. And when they get caught, they, they plead the fifth. Come on. Come on. Maybe, hey, when we the citizens, uh, if we get caught, can we plead the second? <laughs> I mean, what would that look like? All right, moving on. Google is already using SOPA-like censorship. This is an article by Paul Joseph Watson on InfoWars.com today. Check it out online. Now, this is a very important story because, of course, Google joined in the Internet strike, the big blackout that took place on Wednesday. You had Reddit. You had Wired Magazine, Wikipedia, uh, our own site, Natural News, also joined in. Many others taking part in the big blackout, as well as Google. They blacked out their logo. But, but... Is there a contradiction in their actions? Because Google already uses SOPA-like censorship. And some examples of this are Google stripping out legitimate alternative news websites from Google News. As you know, they removed InfoWars sometime in late 2010, I believe. And shortly thereafter, of course, they stripped Natural News out of their news index as well. And we never really openly complained about it because we just get so much traffic from so many other sources. But Oh, but here's something interesting. Even though they stripped us out of their website, they would publish the news stories on other sites that had copied our news and placed it on their sites. So you see, Google News wasn't really against our news. They just didn't want our website to get credit for it. So they allowed other sites that were pirating our news to get credit for it. So there you go. That's how Google News really works. And of course, Google owns YouTube and YouTube does whatever the government tells it to do, strips away videos of public protests because a lot of countries that where the people demand freedom are now using YouTube to publish videos that call for protest, that call for freedom, that call for liberty. And when that happens, the government just says, YouTube, take them down. And they do. They comply. So, you know, isn't it isn't it kind of strange that Google's protesting SOPA when it's very much SOPA like now we I mean, for the record, I admire Google for going dark on its homepage for the SOPA protest. I just think they need to be more consistent with it. If they're in favor of freedom of information, why do they censor all the alternative news websites out of Google News? After all, well, here's another thought on that. If you look at the mainstream news websites that are, that are published in Google News, they're all copying the same content from Reuters and AP. It's all canned news. 
I mean, if AP puts out a story, you can find 50 to 60 other websites that have the exact same story, same title, same text, word for word, and Google News will publish that. No problem. Why? Because it's mainstream conventional news that has the disinformation that they want the public to see. But if you have intelligent analysis, if you have alternative news or an alternative viewpoint, or if you're pro Ron Paul or anti vaccine or anti tyranny, then your news, no, all of a sudden that's not okay. That's how it really works there. All right, moving on. Another big thing that happened after the SOPA protest, the big internet strike blackout of Wednesday, was the Justice Department raided megaupload.com, which was a big uploading site. Some of its files were shared, you know, illegally. They were in copyright violation, but most of their files weren't. At least that, that's my understanding. I wasn't actually a user of that site, so I can't speak from personal experience. But in any case, the Department of Justice, without due process, and basically giving a finger to the Internet protest that took place on Wednesday, the Department of Justice seized the website. They handed out seven indictments, and they even got the New Zealand police to raid the founder of the site, what's his name, dot, uh, dot com is his handle. He lives in New Zealand. And because some of the allegedly pirated content was hosted on servers that were leased out of Virginia, the U.S. believes this gives it the right to go into foreign nations and arrest people there. They seize more than $8 million in assets. And, of course, that money's gone forever, disappearing into the black hole that is government. The Electronic Frontier Foundation has a statement on this. They said that the arrest sets, quote, a terrifying precedent. If the United States can seize a Dutch citizen in New Zealand over a copyright claim in Virginia, then what is next? Hey, yeah, no kidding. Well, that's the whole point of it. What is next? If SOPA had passed or PIPA, the Protect IP Act, you know, SOPA stands for Stop Online Piracy Act. It's not soup in Espanol, as some people have been joking about. Stop online piracy, okay? But SOPA and PIPA, if they had passed, it would have given the U.S. government the, quote, legal right to go in and seize and shut down any website that they wanted, any website whatsoever, for just about any, any quote, violation. And these violations could be things as simple as, of course, someone coming on to, let's say, Infowars.com and posting a comment that contains a link to a copyrighted video. So even if Infowars itself didn't mean to have that comment on there, the Justice Department could say, your site is promoting piracy. And so we're going to take it down. Well, you know, hey, hey, in my view, the MPAA... Uh, it's a pretty pathetic organization, in my opinion, because they are willing to sacrifice freedom all across the Internet just to protect their little corporate profits. Their greed is so immense that they will strip away your First Amendment rights and they will shut down websites everywhere, legitimate educational websites, just so that they can collect their royalties on their mind control movies out of Hollywood. Most of them are filled with all kinds of hypnotic disinformation that try to alter your view of reality and give you give you false ideas about things like these movies about pandemics, you know, just prepping you, making you comfortable with the idea that there's going to be a massive global pandemic, a super virus released as a bioweapon that lots of people are going to die and the government's going to come in and be your savior. That's the kind of movies that they want to put out there that they want us to pay for, that they want to protect. Give me a break. So uh, Anonymous, I guess, sort of agrees with that analysis. And they went on what's called a, a mega upload revenge spree. <laughs> kind of like that term. Uh, they, they shut down yesterday the Department of Justice website, the RIAA, target after target. They shut down the MPAA. They shut down EMI, Universal Music, all of them offline because of this rampage from Anonymous which, you know, Anonymous doesn't really have a, a, a leader, obviously. Otherwise, they would be taken down just like Julian Assange from WikiLeaks. So they have to remain anonymous. And no one really knows exactly who they are. As Alex has pointed out, that can be somewhat dangerous because the government can sometimes act like they are anonymous and put in a false flag hacker attack. But in this case, it's very clear that this was the real genuine anonymous engaged in this attack. And, you know, a lot of people say... Well, Anonymous, they're a bunch of hackers and they're a bunch of criminals doing all these crimes online. I got to say, you know, in, in some way, I kind of 